Omaha's news leader, chronicling the stories and people making a difference in our community. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. Good morning, I'm Matt Lotherp, and this is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. Few could have predicted the rocky start to the Scott Frost era, but a strong finish fuels optimism as the Huskers will head into 2019 as Big Ten West contenders. Before we look at the future, we're reflecting on the past and the players and the moments that helped build Nebraska into one of college football's blue bloods. Each week, we share the stories, both past and present, from Huskers of the last half century. This morning, we've compiled some of the year's best into one show. Husker history is littered with names like Remington, Johnny the Jet, and Rich Glover. Another pillar of Nebraska's dominance joined that group this fall in the Nebraska Athletics Hall of Fame. Mike Rozier came to the Huskers out of Coffeyville Community College in 1981. Three years later, he left Lincoln atop the record books. Whether it was breaking away from would-be tacklers. He's a great back and we made him look even greater. Or fielding questions after the game. I wanted to go out there and do the best I can like every other game. Mike Rozier had a style. My mom always tell you your first appearance is the appearance that people remember you by. That first appearance came in 1981. A debut Rozier still remembers. I stopped in the middle field and looked around and seen everybody in red hollering. I never seen that before and I'm just amazed. During the next three seasons, Rozier returned that amazement, rushing for a program record 4,780 yards. Friday somebody mentioned to me about, you know, you're pretty close to the record, you know, on what you want to do. But no, when I was on the field, I wasn't thinking about the record, I was just thinking about winning. Twice named a first-team All-American, Rozier capped his career with the 1983 Heisman Trophy. I Man, I know it's a great trophy to win. Um, I did my best, you know, for my team, but, you know, uh, I guess if you play good, you know, the good things will come to you. A 2006 inductee into the College Football Hall of Fame, this fall, Rozier's career once again honored as he joined a star-studded class in the Nebraska Athletics Hall of Fame. It's terrific, you know. Most people get awards while they're, while they're gone, so it means a lot to me because I'm still alive and I could appreciate more of my mom and dad can too. 35 years later, Rozier's style is still there. He returned home to New Jersey, but remains a Lincoln fixture in the fall, reconnecting with coaches and teammates that made up one of the great eras in Nebraska football. On a smaller scale, a quartet of former Huskers joined the Nebraska High School Hall of Fame this fall. Long before winning the Super Bowl with the 1977 Raiders, Rick Bonas starred at Bellevue, then rose to stardom in Nebraska's early pipeline. It's very nice of Coach Osborne to invite us to his coming out party. 1973 marked not only the debut of Nebraska coach Tom Osborne, but a sophomore center from Bellevue. We've talked to you about Rick Bonnet, the 205-pound, 6'4", quick-moving sophomore. A Cornhusker career, twice including first-team All-American honors. Rick Bonnet, University of Nebraska. Rick was with us last year, and he's some center. The only time anyone ever moved Rick out of position was when they built a freeway through his leg. Just to start with, I had the opportunity. The position opened up. I hadn't gotten hurt. So, I mean, there's so much luck involved. You step in and take advantage of that, but there's a lot of luck. After Nebraska, Rick Bonas spent five seasons in the NFL, where relationships with teammates helped shape his life after football as an attorney at Kudak Rock. My first dream about playing football was at looking at the uh, from afar looking at the lights shining on the high school game. Um, and then it just, the dreams changed, became more about causes for others. That ultimately uh, turned, became a dream to find a cure for type 1 diabetes for our two sons. Bonus using his football past as a platform and a playbook in his work with the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Being involved with a group of people, the idea of 100% effort and perseverance until the final whistle go, blows, you know, and then now that's a cure for type 1 diabetes. And like his days as an All-American lineman, Bonus not resting on his laurels, but focused on the next play. In keeping with the Hall of Fame theme, the Nebraska chapter of the College Football Hall of Fame welcoming a half dozen of the state's top collegiate players this fall. In that mix, Mike Rucker, who started just 14 games at Nebraska, but made the most of every opportunity. Corby Jones, 
Hands it off yeah. to West, and he is sacked, and no gain on the play. Big hits in the backfield highlight the Cornhusker career of Mike Rucker. I do the best with the guy, and so I'm taking those plays and trying to do the best things I can with those. And he's it, and front down. It was Mike Rucker who got to him. A three-time national champion, Rucker sacked Peyton Manning in the Orange Bowl but cherishes the more iconic game from earlier that season. Obviously being a Missouri guy, being at Missouri, for a lot of reasons that, that is a special game, but it's even more special to me by the way that we ended that overtime. Grant Winstrom, Missouri boy on, on one side, I'm on the other side, and we close out Corby Jones with the sack. As a senior in 1998, a pelvis injury hampered Rutgers' only season as a full-time starter. He would face even more adversity and persevere, in a nine-year career with the Carolina Panthers. We went 1-15, right? We were kind of the laughing stock. But me personally, taking some of that Nebraska, we don't quit type attitude, brought that to the team. Two years later, we're in the Super Bowl. Rucker retired in 2007 and now calls Charlotte home. He returns to Lincoln several times a year, including this fall as an inductee into the Nebraska College Football Hall of Fame. There's a lot of football being played and a lot of good plays that were on that field and the memories of the guys that are uh, in the Hall of Fame. So it's a true blessing. I'm, I'm very thankful to be part of this class. A name now etched in the state's proud football history after a career that helped define an era of greatness. The final Hall of Fame inductee highlighted this morning lived the Nebraska dream. Kyle Larson grew up on a farm outside Kearney, walked onto the Huskers, and became just the fifth walk-on in program history to earn first-team All-American honors after a dominant three years at the turn of the century. Fifteen years later, Memorial Stadium still appreciates the greatness of Kyle Larson, a one-time walk-on who continued a strong tradition of Cornhusker punters and this fall join the Nebraska Football Hall of Fame. We've always made a big deal about special teams here. Uh, as everyone knows, it can win or lose a game, and uh, that's something that the coaches during our time really focused on. Coach Solich always put a, a big emphasis on it, and um, always something we very much took pride in. When the pressure's on, when you need to kick, when, you, when it needs to get done in, in a manner that's going to give your team the best chance, he steps up. Larson stepped into a starting spot as a sophomore in 2001. He's up to the 30, he gets the first down. Uh -oh. Two years later, he earned first team All-American honors after setting a then program single season record, averaging more than 45 yards per punt. He'll play on Sundays. I mean, he's, uh, he's a tremendous player. Larson did indeed play on Sundays, spending five seasons with the Cincinnati Bengals. Upon retiring after the 2008 season, he returned to the family farm outside of Kearney. So much of what I, I learned growing up on the farm um, got me to where I am today with uh, the hard work. It's really carried me through my life and uh, led me to where I am now. The now, now a spot in the state's football Hall of Fame. It's time for us to take a short break, but when we come back, we talk all things 1980s, from a forgotten All-American to one of the program's all-time leading tacklers, plus the story behind the urban legend of one Husker eating his mouth guard. You're watching KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. Welcome back to KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. I'm Matt Lothrop. This morning, we're reliving Husker football's glory days. Only national championships keep Nebraska's Huskers from talking the 90s and not the 80s. In fact, Nebraska posted college football's best winning percentage in that decade thanks to the likes of Turner Gill, Irving Fryer, and a linebacker named Mark Munford. Right now, he's already established himself as one of the most consistent linebackers Nebraska's ever had. Craving contact, Mark Munford turned down big-time college baseball to become not only a black shirt, but one of Nebraska's all-time leading tacklers. Coach Osborne used to say it was a Spartan game, and the guy that's playing across from you, or the guy that you were competing against, um, needs to know that you weren't going away, and, and you were going to beat him up more than he was going to beat you up. A nose for the football, number 41. A linebacker from Littleton, Colorado, Munford earned all Big 8 honors from 1984 through 86. He just threw it right, right into my hands and just took off after that. But his vivid memories are losses to Oklahoma, 
keeping Nebraska from a national championship. We feel like we were knocking on the door but could never get to the other side. Or that's the way I feel anyway, looking back, is you know, we were so close uh, a, a numerous times and just couldn't get it done. And that, that part of it is, is disappointing when you look back. In a way, Munford's five-year NFL career reflected his time here at Nebraska, getting close to a championship, but losing in two Super Bowls with the Denver Broncos. After injuries ended his playing days, Munford did some coaching before embarking in a career in finance. What I do is, is help municipalities uh, finance projects across the state of Nebraska, help them procure the funds they need to, to build roads, schools, jails, hospitals, etc. Munford now with a career to create after days of destruction on defense. Now, just a few years before Munford, an undersized walk-on roamed the Nebraska secondary. Now he roams the sidelines at Millard South. Andy Means guided his Patriots to a 9-2 mark this fall and an appearance in the state quarterfinals. Millard South will likely make more state playoff runs in the near future as Means continues to emulate the program he once played for. The calming sideline demeanor of Andy Means reflects that of his mentor, Tom Osborne, the coaching legend he played for nearly four decades ago. I just worked hard. I just did what they told me to do, like I tell my, my players. Sometimes people wait for things to happen, but sometimes you can make things happen. And so when I got the opportunity, I was able to, I was able to take advantage of it. One of Nebraska's true walk-on success stories, the Holdridge native used a tireless work ethic to become a three-year starter and an all-conference defensive back. It's tough. His scrambling was the, was the worst problem today. Means reeled in eight interceptions from 1978 to 1980, including one that would spawn an urban legend about a missing mouth guard. I intercepted a pass at Oklahoma State in 1979, and uh, I got hit out of bounds and got knocked out. The announcer uh, had said I'd swallowed my mouthpiece, which kind of made my dad mad because he was a dentist and he form-fitted my mouthpiece. I didn't swallow my mouthpiece. Concussions kept Means from a potential professional career, but not from the game of football. After his days at Nebraska, he shifted his focus to coaching and has led the program here at Millard South for the last 15 seasons. You take things from other, other people, and obviously I've taken a lot from him. Um, he's been a great supporter, and, and uh, he keeps track of what we do. You know, you got to be your own person, you got to be your own coach, and that's, that's what I've tried to do. That approach bringing success from a Class A state championship in 2009 to a strong contender yet again this fall. The 1980s were a golden age for offensive linemen at Nebraska. Names like Remington and Steincooler still resonate as much as Rozier and Rogers. One of the nine first-team All-American linemen from that decade is often overlooked. Here's the story of lost letterman Harry Griminger. This is for the national championship. The moment lives in Cornhusker lore. More than three decades later, Harry Griminger still holds tight to the final seconds of the 1984 Orange Bowl. He lived it from his spot at left guard. Just think about really the, the place in history that that, that, that play has taken. Uh, and it, was, it, it just, I think, illustrates Tom Osborne's integrity and, and his desire to, do, to play the game the right way. A backup in 1982, Griminger went on to start 25 straight games. His agility and aggressiveness earned him first-team All-American honors in 1984, but the Grand Island product is often overlooked. I was just a, a guy of average talent uh, at best, and I just worked really hard. And I, to this day, I just think back, and, and I got a lot out of what God gave me. Following football, Griminger gave coaching a shot before landing a career in education serving as the assistant principal at Millard West for the last 19 years, passing along the life lessons he learned as a Husker. Trying every day to be better than the day before, uh, and that's a pretty basic fundamental lesson, but it's one that I try to live by. A generational gap keeps Griminger's greatness unknown by most of the Millard West students. But those that hear the rumors and do the research find a lost letterman whose never-ending effort landed him in Husker history. Well, just a handful of Huskers have played more years in the National Football League than Will Shields. He's one of just five Huskers in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. 
In 14 NFL seasons, Shields became a mainstay on the offensive line for the Kansas City Chiefs, continuing a legacy he started in Lincoln. His Hall of Fame Cornhusker career featured just one carry, a 16-yard gain against Colorado. Actually, I'm not disappointed. I'm happy I got to run the ball. But few can top the play of Will Shields, winner of the 1992 Outland Trophy, a first-team All-American whose greatest memories come from the success of teammates. Kenny was here and he uh, was deaf and they did the game that celebrated him as a senior. Uh, just having him come out and seeing what he had accomplished with a guy that couldn't hear was unbelievable and just seeing that physical talent uh, was amazing. 25 years later, Shields remains popular thanks to a 14-year career with the Kansas City Chiefs. That led to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And more recently, his son Siobhan, etching his own place in Husker history. For him to be able to say, hey, he went and, you know, went to the, went to the Corn Huskers, uh, to me that was one thing that was sort of like, you know, it was his choice, he did well, uh, you know, played, played as hard as he could when he was here, and that's what he did. You know, the greatest thing about it is he left it all on the table while he was here. Family took over after football, but Shields also operates a fitness center, runs his own foundation, and works with the NFL in helping players transition out of the game. You're constantly transitioning and you never really truly figure out how it is and what's next uh, because you always have that, you know, looking back at what you've done and what you've accomplished so far. Uh, but you also got to look forward and say, how can we build on that and how we can, can build up the next generation of guys that are leaving the game. As Shields continues his transition out of football, his past speaks for itself as one of Nebraska's all-time greats. Up next, the former Huskers impacting their communities and helping shape the future of the current program. First, a reminder that your comments are an important part of the show. If you want to be heard, email your comments to news at KETV.com. Remember, we love hearing from you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. Throughout the fall, we have caught up with former Huskers to see where they are now. This morning, we have put some of our favorites into one show. Well, stop me if you've heard this one before. A heroic Husker quarterback in his first year of coaching back here in his home state. It could be Scott Frost, or it could be the next guy to wear number 7 for the Scarlet and Cream. Eric Crouch, a Heisman-winning Husker who broke into the college ranks this fall. Speed made him a star. Elusiveness taunted would-be tacklers. And the catch, oh the catch, secured a place in Nebraska lore. Eric Crouch, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Nearly two decades later, Eric Crouch is back in football, roaming the sidelines as a first-year assistant coach. Just being a quarterback in general, you're always coaching your receivers, you're coaching your running backs, your linemen, you know, you're, you know, you're just a coach on the field, and so it's just kind of second nature for me. Crouch joined the staff at Midland University last spring, breaking into the coaching profession with an open attitude. Good, make a move, get north and south. He told graduate assistants, you know, hey, if you see anything I can be doing better, let me know. I want to know, don't keep it to yourself. And that's what the great ones I've been around are ones that are always trying to get better. Head coach Jeff Jamrog has known his newest assistant coach since their paths crossed at Nebraska. But few of the current Warriors are old enough to remember Crouch's Cornhusker career. It was kind of funny. We had a stiff arm drill, and of course, I'm the one over there giving the stiff arm drill, and people were kind of, you know, chuckling about that. Like it's kind of, kind of weird, Coach, how they gave you the, you know, the the, the stiff arm drill, isn't it? You know, you won the Heisman Trophy and all that. Success has followed Crouch from his parade All American days at Millard North to a brief stint in pro ball. His new boss sees a bright future. But Crouch remains focused on the present. I'm not doing it really to say, look, like I just want to, you know, climb up the ladder as fast as I can. I want to, you know, make money coaching. That's just, that's just not me. I mean, when I'm in the here and the now, I'm with the player. I'm, I'm all about them. I'm trying to get them to the next stage in their life to have success, whether, you know, it be on the football field or in life. In what could be a long coaching career, Year one for Eric Crouch is a way to give back locally to the game that has given him so much. The term Jasker often refers to fans that wear Husker red for football, Creighton blue during basketball season. But what about a player who has ties to both? 
In fact, five decades after graduating from Nebraska, Jim McFarland finds himself on the hilltop pursuing his next chapter in life. Uh, another story I've written. Jim McFarland knows a good short story starts at a crossroad. His came in 1967 on Nebraska's practice squad. Jim McFarland, he says, you know, I've been watching you in practice, Jim, and you're going to play a lot of ball for us next year. You just keep it up. Keep up the good work. And then he walked on. And I thought, holy cow, first, he knew my name, actually. <laughs> so after that day, I thought, you know, wild horses couldn't make me quit. McFarland would fulfill Coach Bob Devaney's prophecy during the next two seasons. The walk-on tight end from North Platte went on to earn second-team All-American honors in 1969. All you have to do is catch one touchdown pass in front of 75,000 fans in Memorial Stadium, and you go from becoming a virtual unknown person to a celebrity in the entire state. Everyone knows your name. After six NFL seasons, McFarland's name reemerged in politics first in the state legislature, then in a run for governor in 1998. On a quest to continue learning, the 71-year-old McFarland has returned to school. He's part of the NFL Players Association's Trust Fund Foundation. He's currently pursuing a master's degree in creative writing here at Creighton University. I've had unique life experiences. You write about what you know, and I know about uh, sports. I know about politics. Uh, I know about growing up in a working class family. And in a life highlighted by pigskin, then politics, Jim McFarland's next chapter might just be that of a published author. Well, he's one of the best in school history to play a position which is now an endangered species in college football, the good old fullback. But his attitude, effort, and perseverance will never go out of style. Our final look back this morning connects with a true fan favorite, Joel McAvicka. A poster child for Nebraska's walk-on program, Joel McAvicka's hard-nosed style made him not only a household name, but a fan favorite. Still on his feet, he's in! Second, third, and fourth effort! The fans used to just love that lunch pail mentality of the fullbacks, and, and we had a lot that, you know, had walked on or, you know, were um, not highly recruited and came in and, and played at unbelievable levels. The second of four McAvicka brothers to play for the Huskers, Joel still holds the fullback record for most touchdowns scored in a game and a season. To be the great fullback, so you have to be an all-around fullback, and that's what I'm trying to do. A senior co-captain in 1998, his lasting memory came the year before. But the most special was obviously Coach Osborne's last game. There was a lot of guys that got a hold of us and, and a hold of me that said, you know, we're jealous that you get to play in his last game. And, and so, you know, we talk about that a lot, that Tennessee didn't stand a chance in that game. McAvicka's list of accomplishments include three national championships, academic All-American honors, and a four-year NFL career with the Arizona Cardinals. But arguably his most proud moment comes from applying those life lessons learned in football to his current career as the president of McAvicka Physical Therapy. Taking that work ethic I learned in college, not only in the classroom, but on the football field and, and translating that into the business world. Two decades later, McAvicka is still a Husker, promoting the walk-on program and making an appearance in the season's first tunnel walk. And while his fullback position has faded in a new era, he remains one of the best to play it. Remember, if you missed any part of the show or want to watch it again, it's online right now at KETV.com. Just go to our homepage and click on the menu button, then look for Chronicle. I'm Matt Lothrop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next Sunday morning for KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle.